Hi guys, what's up? Given all this hype and progress in artificial intelligence, are you thinking what to study or whether you should even change your job or what job you should get into after you have successfully finished your education or studies or whatever other education you had? If you're thinking so, then you're not alone. A lot of people are currently thinking or fearing on the implications that artificial intelligence will have on jobs and on the labor market. So today I'm going to give you my top 12 hypotheses about what artificial intelligence will do with jobs and on the labor market. But before we get into it, let me clarify first what a hypothesis is. It's basically an idea or an explanation or a prediction about something that you're trying to test. In statistical terms, you would say you would come up with a prediction. For example, the earth is, is flat like a pizza. That's your null hypothesis. And your not null hypothesis is, is false. So the earth is not it's not flat like a pizza. So basically it's just a theory or a guess that you're trying to validate through experimentation. So having said that, let's come to my 12 hypotheses about the labor market implications that AI will have. Number one, automatable solutions will more augment and support human-based work instead of replacing it. The technology is there to do good and we are not um, from one day to the other at least, not replacing all the jobs that are there, whether it's technical feasible or not, that's another question. But in the end, the technology will be used to make our everyday life more efficient and we can use that technology to work more efficiently. Therefore, it will, at least in the beginning, and uh, not be used to replace us, but to support us. Number two, just because something is technically feasible doesn't mean it will be deployed because market fo forces, uh, labor, uh, supply and demand and other factors will drive and confirm that hypothesis. Number three, labor market dynamics in terms of quality, quantity and associated wages will drive uh, whether people will be replaced by software and hardware machines or not. The first sub point to that is it is obviously easier to replace a lawyer or an accountant via smart software instead of a bartender or a gardener due to the physical uh, hardware setup that you need. The next sub point to that is of course the cost of deploying it. Uh, the hardware that you need to set up, initiate, test, deploy and so on is way more expensive than any software algorithm that uh, you can set up and implement to replace um, yeah, office workers like the accountant or the lawyer. The last sub point to that is of course associated wages uh, that are attached to the gardener or the lawyer. In terms, of, uh, in terms of average income, it is more worthy to replace the lawyer or the accountant which, which generates higher cost for businesses instead of um, replacing any gardener due to the physical setup and also the associated wages. This brings me to my fourth hypothesis. It will be way harder from a technical and economical perspective to replace or to substitute low wages, low wage paid jobs because due to the physical and hardware setup that you need. Number five, only if we understand how the human mind and the brain works, we can decode and understand and, and put that into a software and hardware. By saying human brain, I'm referring to classification, reasoning, decision making, planning, organization, emotional feelings, consciousness, all these sort of things are triggered from our brain. And once we decode it, we will, we will only be able to, to put artificial intelligence into meaningful uh, software and hardware. Number six, there will be three forms of life in the future or in the age of artificial intelligence. Once obviously that we have today, the human based life without any machine connection, then the next one is a mixture between humans and machines, which you could also call cyborgs, somehow that the human body and mind is connected to some sort of instances with machines that will help it, enable it to work more efficiently, collect data, analyze structure of the body and so on. The last one is machines only as a pure form of machine life on earth. So these are the three forms. Number seven, social and regulatory factors domestically and internationally will shape the landscape of artificial intelligence usage and implementation. There can be differences domestically and international, but certainly a big factor is the social acceptance. If people are not willing to accept and work with something like potentially that's smarter than them, like machines will be in the future, then this might shape also uh, on the acceptance of how the technology might not be used in the future in some instances. Number eight, intelligence enables control. 
We see that already today we are controlling big and dangerous animals like gorillas, snakes, lions and so on and so forth because we are simply smarter than them and we not stronger. So by being, by being more intelligent we control them. So the same applies for the machine, machine intelligence logic. Whatever is smarter has control over the other. Number nine, the quality of algorithms and implementation execution setup will determine how effectively artificial intelligence technology can be used and will be used and only if it's used effectively it can replace human based uh, jobs and labor. Also the other point I'm referring on this is that um, it depends in the end on the human being or the, the community of how the technology is being used. If individuals have are deviating with their own individual goals from a common overall goal then of course the technology can be used badly or massively destructive instead of setting it up effectively and for the overall community and society goods. Number 10. Nobody can foresee the future and nobody knows when artificial general intelligence will be achieved. There's a wide discrepancy between all the experts in the artificial intelligence community which reach from a decade to uh, one century, two century, until never. So there's wide disconsens having this debate. We cannot say whether or when we will ever achieve uh, AGI or artificial general intelligence, super intelligence. Number 11, if software and hardware machines are going to replace human based jobs, then alternatives like a universal basic income, UBI, or free sponsored study programs might be real alternatives to our working and living situation as a society as a whole today. Number 12, my last hypothesis is whether a machine will have a consciousness or not is irrelevant for the fact that a software or physical machines will replace a human based labor in the future. Summarizing the 12 hypotheses in more general terms will give us an outlook for the future is very uncertain but we can be certain that all industries, some more, some less, will be impacted by the technology of artificial intelligence. And in the end, it depends on all us humans as humanity and as a society on how we will use and shape our labor market and our everyday life using this technology. And political leaders and company leaders will come up with new debates and discussions about what alternative solutions can be to living effectively as content human beings with machine solutions together. So what do you think about the future of AI? Please let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And if you would like to receive more interesting technical or general videos about artificial intelligence, please like and subscribe for daily or weekly updates. Until then, I gotta look into the future and see what AI brings.